the original copy you know it, it actually has a few themes I guess I guess one of the, the major ones is is uh, me returning to the original version of myself you know because at the end of the day I feel no matter what I've been through or how many how many jobs I've had um, Peter Cox is a musician he's a he's a singer songwriter you know and um, <clears throat> it's also a sense of purpose. Like, you know, I've done a lot of things in my life. And nothing fulfills me, like, or has fulfilled me, like, going after this project. And I, I now believe that going through the stuff that I, I went through, it makes it more, um, more memorable, more valuable to me um <clears throat> i would definitely have to say face to face was was probably the first one on the project um face to face <laughs> all i can face to face is is about a, a long distance relationship to be honest um you know i guess at that, that time I would have just gone through some challenges, both professionally and personally. One of my my evening jobs at that point in time, it was I was actually a, <laughs> I was actually a waiter. So you know, I, I I go into work and my supervisor says, "Hey Pete, now that that table there, that's yours." And it's it's, it's a big table. And I say, you know, you know, a big table meaning at least maybe ten or ten people. So I go over there. You're ten beautiful girls, you know, <laughs> and I do my thing, you know. I do my thing. Um, I get to the last person, and you know that sparked the the beginning of a, a long distance relationship. Face to face was one of those songs that I, I didn't really, I didn't really write. It came straight out of me, you know. It was it was pretty much a a day where I was um, at home under my breadfruit tree as usual, me and my acoustic guitar. And um, <clears throat> I pretty much was reminiscent about about that relationship and how I felt at that time, <laughs> you know. So um, I didn't look for chords or anything like that, or I didn't I didn't I didn't reach for words. I just it was jamming, it was vibing, and um, everything came straight out of me. Um, after that, I took it to my boy Sean Warren. <laughs> Took it to my boy Sean Wan. Actually, before that, I actually tried to record it a couple times, but I was met with some challenges. And and um, Sean, being my brethren and being aware of my challenges, uh, he was like, you know what? Um, let's take a shot at producing and, and making this record. So I went over, I put down my guitar, and um, I think in a day or two, he came back with a whole different vibe, a whole different feeling. And um, and we went for it, and it was it was great, you know what I mean. Also, after shout out to uh, uh, Mr. Morris, Ronnie Morris on that one, Gold Coast Records, and uh, we recorded that one, basically in between two spots, you know, that location and and by Paul as well. So who's Sean Wan? <clears throat> um, Sean Wan is an artist slash producer. Straight out of Silver Hill, Barbados. When I first met Peter, um, that was, let me see, it was 2005, four, about that. They had this annual pageant that me at the time, I would go with other people that were in my group. We had a group named Tab, called Tabo Crew. You know what I'm saying? And we had different artists in within that group so we had a gig we used to do basically annually at the Queen's College project and here was four to five guys on the stage blowing away the audience of 
obviously females because we don't know everybody for now super fly tip and um peter cox was one of them the way how he stood out like i ain't gonna lie at that point in time like the crowd went crazy you know they, they brought a good show and so me doing my thing and I listening at the time i was like so your first initial me seeing these people is like, yeah, who's these men? These men sound good, boy, boom, 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 X, Y, Z. So it's only after that, you know, like, we started to talk and uh, interact more. And then for some reason, we didn't see each other. We didn't really see each other there for uh, each other for a little minute. And then we ran back into each other a couple of years later, working at the same place. And from there for sure, the conversations continued and the expressions and the music started to mesh, so to speak. So face to face. Um Peter basically was was telling me about an experience he had with a, a relationship basically. So when he when he played these drums uh, I like what you heard. I started to play it back in my head a couple of times. So, if you listen carefully, you will hear they have uh, a bass guitar basically in the background. So, I wanted to get that feel of the bass guitar following Peter's acoustic at the time. You know what I'm saying? So, I started off with that. That's what really gave me, gave me the drive. Then, I added drums basically in the background, and then it came with a, a little piano and a pad. And I like the I like the song of it, so I let him hear it. I call him over, whatever he had. He had really liked the song of it, and that's how face to face took flight basically. Um, fast fast forward, now we about to do a remix. Um, we got Mimi Glitz, shout out to Mimi Glitz, uh, myself and Peter on the remix, and we got the boy Dangerous in the mix. Take away my dreams You can take all I love But you can't take me Take away my freedom Take away my vision You can take all I love But you can't take me Now, sun late, late Like I said before, it came from a real place A real emotion um, An experience that I was going through at that point in time I was actually fortunate enough to have my brethren with me, Sean Wong, at that point in time, you know, my, my brethren, my real, real friend. Um, you know, I guess I was at a place where I felt like I was in a difficult place. I was fighting for my life, or so I thought, you know, I felt like my sunlight was taken away. Um, that definitely was faced with darkness. And... Again, all, all all the theme of the original copy. So rather than dwell in that darkness, I decided, you know, to try to do something about it and be about my purpose. After that emotion, it went through that emotion, and I actually got the, uh, the first <clears throat> first layer I had in the song was, take away my sunlight, take away my dreams. You can take all I love, but you can't take me. You know, I took it to Sean, and it was real easy for him to write because he was, he was at that, he was at that place mentally. And that that song came about years after the experience because after the experience, me me and Sean we kind of separated for a while. We kind of separated for a bit, and um, my my mother's passing kind of reunited us. It was weird in the sense that I, I didn't I didn't see him for a very long time. Carrie was at my mom's funeral and, and my brethren shows up. My brethren, my, my real world friend shows up, you know. So after we reconnect, reconnected that day, I was able to share experiences with him that I went through after that. And um, it was it was a similar thing. So um, after the lyrics were, were made, we took it to one producer and he was great, you know, he was great. But um, it, the universe didn't align us to complete the project. And then 
you know I actually ran into Dwayne and he also too had heard about the experience and running into him that day was warm I didn't feel I didn't feel prejudiced I didn't feel um, abandoned or you know, separated I felt like a human being and um, so that's why it was again it was really easy to work with doing because he I was able to share the experience and he engineered he engineered sound to match my experience so suddenly yeah <laughs> I remember that there um, it was Paul Clark now bring this group you tell me you got this group because uh, I had a fresh out of school I just left school I think I was playing with Jagna or both were playing with Jagna he was telling about this young group man that mashing up the school scene as um, a cappella group he said one of the fellas from out by me uh, Damien so he tell me it's these four fellas so before I had my studio in my bedroom bedroom studio little setup and thing and blah blah I had some monitors that had a decent setup so these men come around and I remember it was Damien the other Damien Darren Darren sorry Ian Ian, Edward. Edwards, and you. Mm -hmm. And I was impressed with um, Ian and Peter's voice. But then now, uh, he sang that Infinity recording now. Uh, and I remember that went on so easy. Like, and I remember that was my first also. We would say R&B recording. I even went and put a solo on it. And then no uh, years passed, I went touring and stuff, so I didn't see Peter for years. And uh, we would bump into each other one or two times. But I would always be telling Peter, yo, Peter, you gotta come and check me. Yo, Peter, you come and check me. I seen the gas station, yo, Pete, you gotta come and check me. Yo, Pete, you gotta come and check me. Yo, Pete, you gotta come and check me. Then one day, actually come and check me. And uh, it was just trying to figure out where he was as an artist, where he wanted to go. I like big time. I like short time. Uh, I used to find like artists and Barbados never used to be about the short time feel. I always like to be on the artistic feel, which is just to me boring. So I was glad he come because I get to do my stuff, fuse it with his stuff, and it working like a mother. <laughs> 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 I think he had brought. I had asked him for a demo because I always ask for demos. Uh, I think he had played the guitar and sang and left the stuff with me. And he was explaining how, you know, it was an experience that he had, where the lyrics had come from, and how he was so close with his song. And so I had to pay some attention. Um, I didn't like the minor chords so much. I think it was giving yeah, me a little depressed vibe. So I, I, I tried to switch it up to some major chords. And I start with some, I flip the chords a little bit, pop some drums in there, and then I went for the bass. That was a rap. <laughs> <laughs> in general, Peter's creative process is a bit different. So you have to understand the artistry before it reaches its final place. So with Sunlight, um, it came. Well, first of all, this, this song had so many transitions. It started out one way and it turned into something totally different. Um, obviously, it started with him bringing the idea to me on, on a guitar. And he was like, I was trying to get this track finish. It's called Sunlight. Uh, tell me what you think of it. But this track was basically more personal because... It so happens that me and him experience the same exact thing that would bring about the writing of this track. Um, we first ended up taking a beat from another producer and we started off with that process with the producer and we, we liked how it was sounding. Um, we thought actually something was missing. We we wasn't we wasn't sure 
Um, Peter told me that he ran into to do Andres at, Sw at Swayze, and um, they, he was asked to come into the studio, so he wanted me to go with him. So I went with him, <clears throat> and that night, Peter explained to him basically the ins and outs of the song, and he started to go on the keyboard, doing his thing basically, and it started to come together. We he did like a, a skeleton of the track, which is basically something basic, keys, drums, something to get the groove going. And we went in on the microphone. Uh, Peter went first, did his thing. Then I went second, and then we started to come up with the second part, which you were hearing the song, the can't take, can't take, can't take. That was added a little later, and it pieced together well, like the song, at the end, as you can hear it, like it has that breath of fresh air. Like it's very airy when you listen to it, it has an appeal. So that was the end result, and we were really pleased with that. Coming <laughs> Also, <laughs> also another real song that I wrote well in quarantine, um, and you know we we had a lot of time, a bit, so it was checking different styles and it was actually trying to, um, I was you know I was I was messing around with some blues stuff, and um, that's how we initially wrote the song on on a blues feel, and uh, when I took it to Dwayne. Again, that's why I like working with this guy because, um, like, I'm from the Caribbean, you know, so I still want to make my my stance as, you know, an, an artist from the Caribbean. So we, we were able to swing it back a bit more island pop. But initially, it started out something like this. <laughs> Flies before had a goody goody feeling before. Now I'm feeling not sure of your lips, girl. I can't get enough, baby. Let me go, boy. Why I'm for real? Come for the day of it all, baby. She sang Granted like Bill. She had a different name, played the same old game. Enough talk, whining in a wall. Now you came out of nowhere, baby. How you invade my brain? Never before, never before, never before, yeah, babe. Have I had a love like this? Yeah. So, and of course, um, that's another one that I was able to talk to my boy Sean on it. And, like I absolutely love working with Sean. Like, um, you know, he gets me. You know, and we got we got good history. We got good chemistry when we're in the studio together. Either when we're in the studio or when we're working via um, video call or what's not. Like, um, I think we can really tap in to each each other and and complement each other. Um, you know, I guess sometimes I, I kind of write sweet, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, but you know, my guy, he comes from that more hip hop, you know, more hip hop genre. So um, together, I think we make a good combination. And, and yeah, I can see it, see us going a lot further past 2021. With the knowledge that you have now coming through, what would you, what would you tell younger people? I would tell younger Peter Cox to um, stick to your purpose, bro. Stop giving up, you know. Keep positive people around you. You have them around you. You just have to know who they are. Um, be patient with yourself. Work on your work on your weaknesses as much as you work on your strengths. This, this is Peter Cox, two X's. 
um, live and direct who I am. Actually, the album is out. The album um, came out just around my birthday, 22nd of February, 2021. Um, it's doing really good. You guys can get it wherever you're comfortable. It's available on all major platforms. That's Tidal, um, Apple Music, Spotify. You can even uh, support our, our local platform here in Barbados. That's Select the Charts. If you can do that, I would really appreciate that too. Um, so many people I need to thank. I need to thank the NCF for coming to salute. You guys believed in me. Um, thanks to Mr. Mr. Ronnie Morris and Gold Coast Records. Um, all my producers that I work with. Sean Wan, um, Jason, Dwayne Joyce, of course, Corey Ford, my background vocalist, um, Darren Doyle, the Infinity Boys, Kathy Ann Allman, Kathy Ann Allman, let's get that one right. Um, enough love. No, I don't even need to explain that. Um, my family, my friends, my daughters, Malika and Michaela, you're always in my heart. Um, I don't want to leave anybody out. Raj Paul, salute to you. Uh, um, Body by Frank, my brethren. Thank you, um, my neighbors for putting up with me, <laughs> putting up with me practicing that two inch for in the morning, um, and my sister, my sisters, my brothers, um, Brooke, mad love bro, loves the franchise, uh, I hope I'm not leaving anybody out, and if I have left you, it's just because, you know, in the spurring moment, but you know who you are, and you know that, how important you are to me. Um, you can find me on Instagram at the Peter Cox 2 xs Thank you and take care of yourself.